Welcome, this is item number 12 from the released spring 2014 test items for the 7th grade TCAP math test. The question says, the graph below shows the relationship between C, the total cost, in dollars of renting a tool, and H, the number of hours the tool is rented. I would assume, by the way, that this isn't like they're renting a hammer. They're renting something big, you know, like a, one of those uh, front end loaders or a uh, stump buster. Something they have to order, or concrete mixer, something big. Uh, although, based on what the prices they're giving me, maybe not. Anyway, based on this graph, which equation best represents the relationship between the total cost of renting a tool and the number of hours the tool rented? I'm going to talk about this in like the mindset of somebody who has ever in their life seen this. This is what's called slope-intercept form. You've probably seen it before, but you may have no idea what it does. You've just seen it somewhere in math and like, that's a math thing. Well, it is a math thing. The nice thing about the slope-intercept form is it is the easiest way to analyze a graph that's a straight line. And you'll notice this is a straight line. There's two parts to it. And math, people who in, make math and work in math all the time uh, don't aren't trying to be clever. They're not trying to come up with a funny zing name uh, or to sell product. What they're trying to do is make things as functional as possible. So if it's called the slope-intercept form, they're putting it there because it has a slope in it and an intercept. So the B value is the intercept. What does that mean? What's intercept? Intercept is, if I was on a trip, the intercept would be my starting point. And my pen will write. This goes a lot easier. Starting point. The uh, in the case of a graph, anytime I do this, no matter what I have. So say I have a graph that looks like this. Well, without the ability to have any reference to where it starts, it could be anywhere. This is not the same graph as this, or th this, or whatever it happens to be. So I have to have some place to like it lays its head there and I know that it exists. And the way that we do it is mark out the place on the y-axis right there. That's the spot. That's the intercept. It's the point where we start our journey into positive numbers. The other number, the slope, represents an element of change. As you'll see, it's going some direction, up or down, that kind of thing, and by a certain amount. So the amount that it's changing each time we add an x into the situation because X's are just inputs. I input two hours and I find it costs $15. I input three hours and it costs $20. So it's like it, it runs in that fashion. So whatever I plug in X, it tells me what to change in relation to X and then have that starting point to begin with. So those are the two parts I need to figure out, really. Um, and I should say you'll probably also see that slope, the change part, is identified as rise over run. So it talks about how much it goes over or up, sorry, and then over. It's kind of like Mario. This and For M, for me, in my brain, it's Mario. Like the old Mario games, which you may not have ever seen. Uh, they've remade a bunch of them. In the old days, Mario would try to jump up these stairs. And in the old games, if you would press to jump, you could then move the little joystick, and then he'd be over here, or the d a directional pad or whatever. It was kind of between times in, the, in this universe. But if you made him go forward and he kept running into the step over and over and over again, it doesn't work. So you have to go up before you go over, or down and then over, it depends. It's just the idea of going up or down first. So we'll worry about the slope in a minute. Let's worry about the starting point. As you can see, if I were to sort of make this go a little bit more like this, this C, what they've identified as C here, which is total cost, that's my y-axis. So what I want to do is figure out where the line is going to go and slam into that uh, part, uh, into that axis so I can find the starting point. So I'm going to just draw this line backwards and probably do terrible at it. This pen isn't exactly the most accurate thing in the world. Hey, well, the move forward was pretty good. If I get rid of this nonsense, it looks half decent. And I just erased the whole thing, so there you go. That's what you get for trying. Kidding. But you'll notice that the start of our journey is at 5. So I'm going to rewrite this over here somewhere. And then I'm just going to substitute in things that I find. I find that this is 5. That's it. It's plus 5, actually. Because if it was down here, it would be minus 5. That's the difference between the signs that go here. Now the other side of it is, uh, you don't have to do anything with y and x, because it 
if you don't have both variables, it won't be a line, it'll just be a point. So you need to have the idea that x can change and y will change with it. There you go. So all I need to do now is find the rate of change, or the slope. And to do that, I'm just going to pick a point that kind of crosses the grid here. There's a slope formula too, I'm not going to use it. I think that would be more work than I would need to do, and I just don't want to. And here's another point that crosses. So find something that crosses right on the grid. It makes it easy because all you have to do is count. So I'm going to do rise over run. Go up before you go over, just like Mario. It tells me to go from here to here. I had to just go up one step, which is actually five. And really, in this case, you know, you need the five. So to go from here to here, it's five, because 15 minus 10 is five, that whole thing. So I'm going to put the rise as five. If it was going down, by the way, I'd put minus five. That's it. If the number on the M is negative, the line better be going like this, down. But it's not, so it's positive. And then I just need to count how much it's going over. So I've got rise, now I've got to talk about run. Run, Mario, run. From here to here, it's one. That's it. Five over one. Reduces down to just five. That's my slope. It goes right here. And that's my answer. The only difference is they've changed the letters around. So instead of Y, they want whatever the Y is now, which is C. They want whatever the X is to be H. And I'll be willing to go that far. So this question really isn't that difficult. Let's look at the other answers, by the way. Uh, 5H would be 5H plus 0. So it would have to cross down here, and that doesn't make a straight line. It makes like a curved line. Um, it's like if you sort of threw a rocket in the air and it took a second for the the propulsion to kick in. It's like, hey, wobbly, up. Um, same thing for this. This is wrong on all levels. It's totally wrong. Uh, so just mark that out. It's not going up by 10. It's not at zero. And this one, um, the intercept is good, but the slope is incorrect. So just pick the ones that are alike. If, for instance, I chose different points, it'd still give me the same thing. Like, I'll choose that point and this point. Why not? So the here, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it's 35 minus 10. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, and look, it's magically the same slope. So with the line, it works that way. So just take your time and write some stuff down. Use the graph that you're given, and it's really not that difficult. But if you can keep y equals mx plus b in your head, remind yourself that b is where everything starts on that you know up and down vertical axis, and then the m is just the slope. And remember, Mario goes rise over run you're in good shape. It's not that hard conceptually to do. Uh, just make sure you don't make little careless mistakes or look at it and go, ugh, this question, and then just move on. It's too easy to just kind of not take it seriously. So that's it.